Welcome to this edition of the Small Group Show. My name is Brett. It's my buddy Steve. Good to have you guys. And we're looking forward to jumping into what is this particular session. We've got a number of different kind of things in this particular one, a little bit about connecting and coaching and some other new breakthroughs. But the first thing we'll let you know, at the end of the show, Steve and I are going to talk a little bit about a trend or something that's happening out at Willow Creek. So make sure you hang in for that. You know, as we look through our last episode, we were talking about the campaigns and how important those are, but there's a lot of ingredients that go to make a campaign successful. So this show is going to walk you through a number of those things. And the first one out the gate is on training. And we're going to talk about uh, how do you connect everybody in this training segment. Brett's going to walk you through about six, seven, eight different principles that are transferable to just about any church. So you want to make sure you dive into that. Could be six, could be eight, could be 12. It all depends, I suppose. Yeah, so. Could be um, 60. <laughs> uh, the other thing we want to do is uh, when you're launching in the new year and a lot of people are jumping into the 40 Days of the Word campaign or you're just doing your own campaign, everybody's trying to figure out, okay, how do we get coaches and how do we make sure that what you start sustains? And so we got a guy named Alan White, who's a buddy of mine, Steve's, who's going to tell us a little bit about what he's doing out at his place. Yeah. On the testimony, we, we bumped into this guy named Kevin Yoder. He's over in the panhandle of Florida at Rivertown Community Church. And I think you're going to love to hear this. It's a, it's a common topic to all of us, you know, on sermon-based guides for small groups. A different twist, uh, you know, with DVD and exciting on how you take our the host strategy that we've done at Saddleback Church and mirror it with a weekly thing at, a, at an a average, ordinary church. So you want to listen to Kevin. It's a lot of fun. Um, we also got a new trend. It's something that uh, is just coming out. It's a brand new resource called Group Tones. It's a new project that's being worked on in a pilot form right now. And essentially what it is is Sermon Central for small groups. Mm -hmm. Gives you a chance to see what a curriculum that uh, you could post or other people are posting. You could download. It's all free. Wow. Then the tool we have for you is, you know, infrastructure is a critical piece to sustaining uh, your campaigns and also your small groups. It's easy to start groups, it's harder to sustain them, and Life Together has a coaching tool that you can purchase and just learn about how you can coach your leaders uh, for the lifetime of how you're going with your small group network. Uh, the next one is there's been an incredible new addition. You're just coming out with it, I think, what, in this April or May-ish May, time frame? May 16, 17. The brand new uh, 12 conference. This is going to be called 12 Plus. Did yep. I get it right? You got it right. 12 Plus. It's, uh, it's that new uh, where Steve has now taken the, the, the essence of his book, Leading Small Groups with Purpose, and he's designed what is going to be a, another 12-like conference for small group leaders. And so uh, you do not want to miss that. A lot of people are going to be jumping into that, and you can already go ahead and find out information on the website about this, right? Yeah, and that was close, but that's September's conference. We're oh, talking September. about May, so. I'm trying to move you ahead, I know, right? you're trying to move you ahead. <laughs> Do you want to redo that? No, I don't. I think okay. it's just wonderful. Okay, well, it's good enough. Huh? You heard about the 12 conference, and it's actually in May, <laughs> and it's to the point leaders. The one Brett's talking about is going to come out in September. Just Great to have to you for this speech of the, of the episode of the show. Make sure you catch all the elements because uh, it's going to be an exciting thing. Now we want to talk to you about what we learned at Willow Creek. And uh, Brett, dive us into this. A, a, another a crazy concept. Yeah. But. Uh, very powerful for yeah. trying stuff. Um, I got a, the privilege, Steve, of going back. It's like going back to, uh, uh, for an old home week, uh, back to Willow Creek with Shane Farmer, the guy who's now in charge of small yeah. groups. He had a very successful run at Willow Creek working in um, the youth ministry and all their small groups, but now he's trying to do it overall. Mm -hmm. But what uh, they're doing is taking and launching small groups off the weekend service based off the different sections or areas in the mm -hmm. worship center. So it's wow. pretty challenging off the, off the cuff. But what they're doing is after each of the services in between, they're hosting little uh, kind of like uh, you know Starbucks and Krispy Kreme donuts. Uh, probably wouldn't work for the Daniel plan, but you know the concept is, <laughs> is amazing, Steve. When I got there and I saw afterwards, they have people that there are volunteers and some people are part-time folks that are standing up, rallying people out of those areas and having kind of little mixers and stuff. Sometimes they're doing a lunch mm -hmm. or a brunch and they're actually even launching what are events in the the communities that those people actually live in mm -hmm. during the time zone. It's really fascinating to see what God is doing. You know, the thing I love about this is when Bill Hybels was speaking at Saddleback and we had the opportunity as, you know, back in the green room to chat with him about this concept. And, you know, when, when you first hear it, you can, can be thinking, you know, you know, that's crazy. It won't work. It won't, it won't, it won't. Right, uh, right. But the thing that I love about Bill Hybels, Rick Warren, is they'll try anything. And a lot of the things we're doing today is because these men heard from God, not from the people around them. Sure, and they're, sure. they're trying a new concept. And, and I just love where, what they're doing. And I'm trying to think, okay, how can I learn from this 
at Saddleback Church. And I hope you're thinking the same thing. You know, you have people there on the weekend service. How can you learn to take that concept? It may not work, it may work, but why not give it a try because it doesn't cost us anything to try to connect people, so. One last thing I just want to say on this that they're just also now doing is, you think about it, in many of the services, Saturday night services for churches have, tend to be a little bit more believerish, you know, kind of like more of the core of the church. Sunday morning first service tends to be a little bit more, kind of, mm -hmm. but, and the last one tends to be a little bit more people that are kind of infrequent. I yep. won't say flaky, but people yep. are coming less frequent to weekend services. Uh, we don't want to go there. Uh, but the bottom line is now what he's done is he's standing up on Sunday morning, challenging people to go ahead and do a little bit longer meet and greet. And then encouraging them with those people during that same service time that they might meet and greet is to maybe go do a brunch or a coffee or just maybe some sort of a little dessert because it's a little longer meet and greet. It's not just, hey, peace of the Lord be with you. It's tell a little bit about your story. And it's fascinating to see what God is doing with that little addition in their service as well. Yeah. It, you know, even in the uh, Orange County Register today, they were talking about, you know, uh, what would you say the title of the article was? Uncorking Your Neighborhood. Which is all about, you know, building <laughs> community. Uh, we're not going to uncork our neighborhood because we'd be fired. <laughs> it's a little uh, bottle but, of wine. But, but it's, it's great how secular people are, are talking about the value of community. Mm -hmm. And there's uh, many organizations that have learned this through the building industry to the apartment industry mm -hmm. that community holds people together. And so, hey, this is a great opportunity. Uh, you may want to contact Will and learn a little bit more about it. But the point is, we got to do our best to build community. So hope you enjoyed this uh, episode of the show and hope to see you uh, next time. God bless you guys.